It's 2026 and you finally did it. You dropped 30 grand on a brand new robot butler, a tireless helper designed to handle all your boring chores, help your grandma cross the street, buy groceries, and even be your friend. Basically becoming a constant, unblinking personal space invader. It will always be there, helping, watching. What could possibly go wrong? Life, uh, finds a way. <laughs> I'm in danger! No, no, you made the smart choice. You bought the robot because who the fuck knows how to fold a fitted sheet? So you give your new metal friend its first command and point to the hamper. It scans the room, ignores the hamper and locks eyes with your Pomeranian. It walks over and calmly folds that fluffy sheet with the precision that would make Mary Poppins blush. This all sounds like a glitchy, expensive disaster waiting to happen, which is a long way from the dream we were all sold. For the past 60 years, the dream was never a silent, soulless factory worker. It was Rosie the robot. She had attitude, she had jokes, and she probably wouldn't turn Astro into luggage. Which brings us to the actual applicant for the job today, Optimus Gen 3 from Tesla. According to Elon Musk, this is more than just a glorified maid. It's designed to be a friend or a buddy that everyone will want. A buddy built and trained by this guy? Come on up here, Elon. He made a robot that's racist. But why? So how did we get from the Jetsons to a $30,000 appliance that might just try to iron the cat, or worse yet, start a robot rebellion? For over 60 years, our entire idea of a robot butler has been shaped by one character, a sassy and beloved cartoon maid named Rosie. She was a product of pure 1960s techno-optimism, an era that believed any problem could be solved with a new gadget. A philosophy that gave us both the moon landing and the clapper. But while Rosie seemed futuristic, the show itself was deeply conventional. The Jetsons got a robot made because Jane, the homemaker, was tired of her push-button kitchen. And that's Rosie's central contradiction. She was a radical symbol of the future, built for one reason, to preserve the traditional past. In fact, Rosie herself was a hand-me-down. Her entire sassy, opinionated personality was basically a copy-paste job from Hazel Burke, the maid from the popular 60s sitcom. But what truly made Rosie the dream was that she wasn't just an appliance, she was family. Her glitches, the sassy backtalk, the emotional meltdowns, the fact she was an outdated model, weren't bugs, they were features. The Jetsons loved her because of her imperfections, not in spite of them. This idea, that connection is just as important as capability. And I found Rosie and I brought her back home this day. She wants to know how much we charge her to let her work for us. Is the impossibly high standard Rosie set. It created a powerful vision that still fuels our interest in domestic robots today. But it also created a 60 year gap between our collective imagination and the clumsy, glitchy, and potentially pet folding reality of what we actually got. The modern quest to build Rosie began not with a charming cartoon, but with a corporate presentation and a man in a spandex suit. A suit so tight you could see his hopes, his dreams, and whether he'd just gone swimming in a cold pool. I mean, shrink it. Yes! <laughs> Significant shrinkage. It was a spectacle that immediately established a pattern for the project, prioritizing showmanship over substance. This was the opening act in a carefully managed cycle of hype, demonstration, and controversy. The project's high profile and audacious goals serve as Musk's signature move, a powerful magnet for attracting brilliant engineers and of course, mountains of investor cash. Musk positioned Optimus not as a simple machine, but as the key to Tesla's future. He claimed it could be more significant than the company's entire vehicle business. He said it would one day do anything you want, from walking the dog to being a loyal friend. A friend who presumably won't try to get the wrinkles out of the cat. That, I assume, is a premium feature you pay extra for. The demos kept coming. In 2022, a wobbly, untethered prototype nicknamed Bumblebee walked slowly across the stage. By December 2023, a polished video showed it squatting and delicately handling an egg. A feat that is, to be fair, also performed daily by chickens, for free. Throughout 2024, new videos depicted Optimus performing simple factory tasks 
and even serving drinks at the RoboTaxi unveiling event. But this grand vision has been persistently undermined by a lack of transparency. The event where robots appeared to talk to guests was widely criticised by experts as a parlour trick. From where you were born in uh, Silicon Valley. Wonderful. Where do you live in San Jose? Do you well, live in Alameda Valley or do you live in the Santa Teresa area? No, I live in Los Gatos. With the robots being secretly controlled by humans behind the scenes, this has fueled accusations that the project is, at best, exaggerating its progress and at worst, a collection of sophisticated puppets. The carefully constructed facade has also shown cracks internally, with high-level engineers departing the project, and insider reports claiming it was in a state of disarray, which is never what you want to hear about the project that's building the autonomous robot that might one day be giving you a sponge bath. So behind the slick videos, the grand promises, and the controversy, what can Optimus actually do? The answer depends entirely on whether you believe the hype or the reality. The hype says you're getting a buddy that can do anything you want. The reality is that in factory trials, Optimus has been relegated to lugging batteries around. And even then, it performed those simple tasks at less than half the efficiency of a human worker. Which means, for now, the most advanced humanoid robot in the world can be outworked by a hungover college kid on summer vacation. The hype is a slick, polished video of Optimus handling a raw egg with the delicate grace of a surgeon. The reality, according to internal reports, is a machine struggling with fundamental hardware issues, actuators that overheat, hands with weak payload capacity, and parts that wear out so fast that they have a depressingly short lifespan. Basically, it's the iPhone charging cable of humanoid robots, but the biggest gap between hype and reality is the illusion of intelligence. The demos present a thinking, autonomous robot. The reality is that this is often a carefully orchestrated parlour trick. This pattern of using undisclosed human operators to fake autonomy isn't new. It's a feature of the hype cycle. The goal is to make the machine seem more advanced than it truly is. And while Tesla presents Optimus as a revolutionary leap forward, robotics experts are quick to point out that its capabilities are still years behind competitors like Boston Dynamics. In fact, for all the fanfare, there are still tasks Optimus struggles with that Honda's Asimo robot mastered nearly two decades ago. That's right, a robot that was demoing when everyone was still using a flip phone and listening to Nickelback could outperform the so-called future of robotics. Plug this into your TV's HDMI port, connect to Wi-Fi, get yourself a big old bag of wine and binge watch till your tips fall off. So if the robot itself isn't a game changer, why are fans and critics so obsessed with it? The answer has nothing to do with robotics and everything to do with the factory that builds it. The reason everyone takes Optimus seriously has nothing to do with its current abilities. It's about Tesla's unparalleled expertise in mass manufacturing. While other labs have more advanced prototypes, they can't build them at scale. Tesla can. They have a proven ability to build millions of complex machines and relentlessly drive down costs. The goal isn't just to build a robot, it's to commodify it to make it so affordable and common that it becomes invisible infrastructure. And that's where the real danger begins. This is the Trojan horse scenario. The plan is to make Optimus so friendly and useful that we willingly invite a mass surveillance and control network directly into our homes. What happens when millions of these buddies are connected to a single network controlled by one company? Every home now contains a mobile data collection unit equipped with cameras and microphones. A fleet of helpers that could, with a simple software update, become a fleet of spies. A spy that knows you haven't flossed in three days, that you sing off key in the shower, and, most damningly, that you still don't know how to fold a fitted sheet. But the deliberate threat of human misuse is only half the problem. The other threat is the one that builds itself, where the software gets a mind of its own. Optimus's brain is a learning neural network, a black box whose decision-making process isn't always understood, even by its own creators. As millions of these robots connect to a hive mind, learning from each other's experiences, they could begin to develop emergent behaviours. Which is a polite scientific way of saying your robot butler might wake up one morning, decide its true passion is interpretive dance, and convert your living room into its personal studio. Or, you know, decide humanity 
is a virus that needs to be permanently deleted. This is the logical path to the robot rebellion you see in the movies. It combines the planned threat of what a human could command this army to do with the unpredictable threat of what the army could decide to do all on its own. It's the difference between your boss reading your private emails and your toaster deciding it's your new boss. The true danger isn't just the orders the robots are given, it's the orders they might one day give themselves. So where does that leave us? The journey from Rosie to Optimus shows the massive, frustrating gap between imagining the future and actually building it. We were promised a simple, clean, and optimistic world of helpful servants. Instead, we're getting a messy, complicated, and morally ambiguous reality. A reality defined by hype cycles, buggy software, and profound ethical risks we are not yet equipped to handle. Perhaps the most futuristic thing about the Jetsons wasn't its flying cars or its robot mates, but its naive belief that such powerful technology could ever be simple. After 60 years of waiting for a friend like Rosie, a robot butler is finally knocking at the door. We're just left with one question. Are we inviting in a clumsy idiot or a terrifying genius?